The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed. I'm Ken Napsack for another edition of Star Wars Ranked, and more specifically, another edition with Joseph Scrimshaw. <laughs> I sick can't say your name because uh, I'm so excited. There's so much water. It's a hot day. We've been drinking a lot of water. Remember when we used to do all those databanks uh, drunk on the, the Lord's whiskey? But yeah, uh, yeah. Let's bring those days. We got to We got to get back to that. But Star Wars ranks are done with water on a hot Burbank day. Uh, we are continuing. I, I don't know if this will stop. I know <laughs> I've got I've got a couple a couple of uh, other Star Wars rank episodes uh, coming up with uh, my pal Bailey Patterson from Screen Junkies. Nice. He pitched me one. He really wants to do. We're doing that. Um, I, I, I saw someone tweet like, I, you could keep going with this. We're doing the Star Wars figures. We started with the Power of the Force 2 line in 1995. We moved on to the Power of the Jedi. So today, Joseph, we're going to keep the trend going with the Star Wars Saga series. Yeah. This is the series that launched in 2002, April 23rd, 2002. Uh, basically, the Attack of the Clones line ran for a couple years as it moved past that. And yeah, uh, w- I, we might never stop. We might just <laughs> be in a figure figure uh, circle, a time loop. But yeah. it's a lot of fun because we know Joseph Star Wars figures, there's a great importance to them. And this line is no different. Yeah, and it is a, they're a huge part of my fandom, always have been. We could even jump back and do just the Phantom Menace line all by itself. Uh, there's no reason we shouldn't yeah. do that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I have to say uh, that for me, this started as like power of the force. Like I talked about yeah. that, that line is one of my big parts of my fandom. But as yeah. I knew is if we kept going, it would be more about, ooh, which ones would I want now? Because at a certain point, I start to drop off as a collector. Right. And this is the point where I start to drop off. So it's been a real fun journey from this is me really personally sharing, remembering which ones I have to me now looking at mm-hmm. is the Star Wars fan I am now. Yeah. Which action figure is cool and why? It's that that was because Power of the Force. I'm with you. I was I was right there for that. I was excited. And then uh, the next couple lines, and this included, I wasn't there as much. I was watching the movie as a fan, but I just yeah. you know life, money, all those things. Uh, yeah, I didn't get them as much. But then as as we keep going, I'll get back to the point. <laughs> and I'm not even talking like Black Series uh, figures and everything in the last few years. When I started Jedi Alliance with Mod, and I felt the need to buy more stuff. Yeah, there was a period I was sneaking in, and and uh, <laughs> even against my own uh, kind of will, like, ooh, I need that Han Solo. If ooh, I, I need that worked Vader. in a mall like you did. Right, oh, that was part of it. Yes. Right, the KB toys, was right there. Oh, KB, KB toys, hundred oh. percent. I have a lot from that 07, 08 range when, oh. when KB toys was still open there. Yeah, I think it shot like oh nine, oh ten when I was there. Yeah, and, and for you, I was a, you know sports fan too, so I have a lot of McFarlane figures from that era. But like, yeah, that you're exactly right. Because I was, I was, I was, I was the director. I didn't have duties. I could, you know, walk uh, around. I'm going to pop in here, check, talk to the store manager, check the security of yeah. KB Toys again. And so then cool. There was a store called Halo Two, and there is still a a version of Halo Two in the Burbank Mall. But they opened up a Northridge Mall uh, version when I, my mall in Northridge. So I did become. I walked in the first day, <laughs> and uh, uh, a girl Christina was there, and. Uh, I think they got George and I just every day was like get a cup of coffee say hi to them and they had a wall of figures power of the force this and that but a lot of the mid 2000s stuff was there and that's where it comes into play that said the Star Wars saga line is what we're talking about today the best of the Star Wars saga figures and so I'm familiar with some of these and not familiar with with a lot of them so you're right I went through my list is a lot of like this is cool I don't even own it yet yeah Uh, and then ones (laughs) I did own so we're going to start. Uh, that is uh, the preamble now to the meat in our figure sandwich. We're going to go, Joseph, with your number five as we look at the Star Wars saga figures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So d- just for the the context of my list very quickly, for me, the, this was when uh, I had quit my job as an assistant manager at Kinko's. I was living with my incredibly understanding girlfriend and had already covered the walls of our home, mostly in Star Wars figures. Right. She was a fan of Hello Kitty and Barbie, so I just kept buying her Hello Kitty and Barbie stuff and saying, what if there yeah. were just toys everywhere? Yeah, She was down with this up to a point. Right. So by 2002, I was getting a little tight on money and uh, it stressed in the old relationship, sure. understandably. And germane to our conversation, I wasn't sure about Attack of the Clones figures. I loved Attack of the Clones. Mm. But this is a really different line where yeah. they really go all in on 
you got to be able to touch their back and have their legs scissor the lightsaber <laughs> slash. Uh, and they, they were really spread out. Like yes. just like almost every character was just like limbs, every direction. And as always, if, if you're listening and you're like, man, these were my figures. I love them. No offense. It's just a, tr- a personal taste thing. Right, right. For me, they were a little less elegant. It felt like calm down. Uh-huh. Uh, and I actually do think the line does calm down a little bit uh, later, but those initial attack the clone ones. Right. There's some very active, engaged <laughs> action figures, right? Very engaged, very interested in the very, task at hand. Exactly. And he got the blaster bolts for lightsabers to block. And it was yeah, very intense. Yeah. Uh, so that was where we was at with the whole line. Uh, but going back, mm-hmm. I picked one that I want to, for my number five, that I want to pick up now because I want more action figures of this character. And this is yeah. just a cool one I didn't even realize existed. And that is Padme Amidala. Coruscant attack. Oh yeah. So this is Padme from the very beginning of uh, Attack of the Clones when she's uh, in in the decoy mode of she looks like she's just a pilot. Yeah. But that outfit is pretty damn cool. Mm-hmm. And it gets lost in the shuffle of all of Padme's yeah. awesome gowns uh, in her more famous uh, midriff ripped white uh, number that yeah. she has in Attack of the Clones. This one comes with a blaster, of course, a helmet uh, that uh, allegedly fits on her head quite nicely mm. uh, in some weird radar dish thing. <laughs> That's right. She just stand next to a radar dish. Yeah, because I, I think it was one of those like you buy different parts and it all okay. comes together or else it was, you could stick it on. The, I, you know, I didn't do yeah. enough research to know yeah. what, what the radar dish does. The action figures go up and down and whether or not they just give you a piece of somebody's head with them to try to incentivize you to put it all together. Yeah. But I just thought this was a, a sweet Padme. A sweet Padme indeed. I like I like that idea what you're talking about. Padme obviously famous for her gowns and then yeah, a little bit of stuff later on. We got the midriff thing. Cool. You can get that figure in this line too. Oh yeah. We got it. This is Attack of the Clones. But why wouldn't you want to pay homage to this moment of the film? Well, she's flying a ship. It's the beginning and uh, going back to the Kenner line. This is what you would probably, if, if Padme was back there, you'd be like, well, there's truce gown Padme. Yeah. There's uh, the throne room Padme. There's flying a ship Padme or, or course on attack Padme. Yeah. It, it really keeps in line with that kind of Kenner tradition of giving us all these different versions of Leia, Han, yeah. trench coat Han, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I love that. And yeah, and, and you're right. It, it just gets lost in the shuffle of her outfits. Yeah. Yeah. So. You can put that helmet on and she just look cool. Yeah, oh, man. Yep. So that's my number five, Padme Amidala, Coruscant Attack. Coruscant Attack. Well, last episode of Star Wars Rank, you talked about a very good Chewbacca figure, the Dejeric Chewbacca. The Dejeric Challenge. Yes. So <laughs> in that uh, mindset, my number five of the Star Wars saga series from 2003's line, the second year of it is Chewbacca, My Knock Hunt. That's right. This Chewbacca <laughs> has uh, the the mask on, the breathing mask. Uh, he has a, a his bowcaster has a red projectile. Oh yeah. But more importantly, he's holding a Minoc, which <laughs> has a little suction cup that you can put up uh, apparently on some kind of diorama wall. Oh wow! This is. We're breaking it down scene by scene. <laughs> and of course, if you got Chewy winning space chess, you're going to need him hunting space bats. Oh, that's right. My knock hunt Chewy. Definitely my number five. And, and, and keeping with your idea of like very spread out, a lot of action in these action figures, his like fur, his hand, like it's like wind blown. <laughs> oh, is it, is it trying to like capture the, yeah. the mist? I think so. The Exogorth's gut his hand, riling like, through his hair. Yeah. Uh, is his uh, breathing mask attached? It is. It is. I'll slide uh, the picture here so you can see the glory that is Minoc Hunt. Oh yeah, his like the yeah. fur on his hands is flying like flying, he's in right. like he's about to punch the Minoc. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, a flurry of fur on Chewie, <laughs> and the mask is on. I don't know if the mask comes off. I'm trying to find that. Uh, it doesn't say. It looks like it's no. It looks uh, no no. It looks yeah. like it stays on. I don't know. Stays on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting choices. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, there. It's not removable. Bandolier and the pouch are part of the figure and not removable as well. So you're stuck with all that, but that Minoc, you can stick on a wall. Uh, at this point, you know, you got a lot of choices where you can take off the old bandolier. Right. Why not just go to town? Yeah. Yeah. Does your Chewbacca collection need this, sir? <laughs> I'm tempted. I'm tempted, <laughs> but I got a lot of good Chewies. Uh, a lot of Chewies out there. Minoc Hunt is why it's on my number five, because we needed that one, which means we're up to your number four. My number four, I did not own back in the day, but I bought just a couple of years ago right here in Los Angeles. Uh, I used to do 
shows at the Nerd Melt showroom, a uh, uh, hotbed of alternative comedy in Los Angeles. Um, I had done a show that went well, and I was excited. Uh, so the the if you've never been there, the showroom was just like really like the back room of a comic book store yeah. that also had uh, at the time a bunch of action figures. So I would oh, go yeah. in and be like, this is where I wanted to always be as a child. Like I do comedy <laughs> in the back room and then there's Star Wars action figures in the front. Dream scenario. <laughs> Star Wars in the front, comedy in the back. It was <laughs> great. Uh, I did a show I liked and I had been looking at this little fella and I had to have him. My number four is my favorite pod racer, Team Toe Paglius with goggles. <laughs> I'm telling you. So I, I just brought up the picture and I had not, apparently when I was, when you sent your list over earlier uh, this weekend, I, I couldn't find the picture on the list, but I have, oh, I have found it. Yeah. And those goggles are removable. Yeah. They're so removable. You can really act out a lot. It's, <laughs> I love the note here. The figure is trouble standing by itself, but you could use the tail to adjust the balance a bit. <laughs> Team toe, bag, bag, how do you say it? Paglius? Paglius is how Paglius. I say it. He's got shorts on. His his feet look like Mark McKenney's chicken lady character, <laughs> but he's got like a dog's arms. It is it's a fascinating design. Yeah, because you don't really in Phantom Menace in the Padres you see him sitting down. You don't really see him up and about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's even yelling somebody's name when you see him. Yeah, you gotta. Uh, you know, I've, I've told this story on Four Center many times. I fell in love with him because of his portrayal in the PlayStation One Phantom Menace yeah. video game, where Qui Gon needs something from him, but he's drunk. Um, <laughs> And I just love the way he's posed. You're right. He's got the dumb little shorts. He's got a, a weird face with the big eyes and kind of bunny ears and a big mouth full of weird teeth. And in the package, he's got his hands up in the air like he just does not care. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> he is looking at the figure alone, not necessarily the, the Phantom Menace appearance. The figure alone is the most Hanna-Barbera <laughs> Star Wars character ever. Yeah. His teeth are like yeah, big buck teeth but he's got the kind of the fangs coming up from the wow yeah i've never in all the years and i've heard your story and i love that you have the reason you love team toe i've never really paid attention to this figure <laughs> <laughs> stopped it's, and really looked into team toe got a utility belt that's to die yeah. for yeah and uh, you know for me he was he's such a great example of you know i i generally don't take the action figures out of the package sometimes mm -hmm. i do but like i you know, I put them up in my home and I walk by and they just make me happy. Even if I'm having right. a, a crap day and I don't even fully digest that they made me happy. Yeah. Team Toe was sitting on the top of my uh, increasing mountain of action figures for a long time. Yeah. And I just walked by him and he's like, you're so weird and so funny. And it's so weird that you exist as an action figure. And I have a nice memory of when I bought you and why. Right. And it reminds me of doing Four Center. It just makes me happy. Do you do... You have to. We're the same milk, same milk. Uh, and I'm sure other people listening. So my living room right now, have, I have my books, which has, you know, they're divided by interests. And yeah. Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Douglas Adams, Nick Hornby, all that kind of stuff. Baseball, wrestling, history. I love David McCullough books, all that stuff. And I just I just sometimes, and there's like a lot of Star Wars figures, like little pops on them. Yeah. And like, I'll just stand in front of it and be like, this makes me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you're describing to yourself? Yeah, like, absolutely. Team Toe's there and I love it. Yeah, just stop and look and absorb, you know? Yeah. They, they're, they're, they have meaning. They're little symbols. It's my life's joys. Yeah. I like them in place. Well, Team Toe would definitely enjoy it. Seriously, this is a... This is a great figure. It's a hell of a figure. It's, he also comes with a, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, as far as just being crazy, it's a great figure. Yeah and, yeah, and and worthy to be on your list at number four, uh, which means we're up to my number four, and it is. So I was going down the list, and and I had some. There's a lot of. I have a lot of honorable mentions on this one. Okay, but I was thinking in terms of by the time to by the time you get to this line, like. The other two lines, and we're gonna—I know you said the Phantom Menace line, but the ones that are dealing with the the saga overall are doing a great job of uh, Bespin escape Leia yeah. and things filling in little details. Well, then along comes this Jabba's Palace Court Denizens collection. Ooh, uh, there's a lot of them there. There's a lot of things going on, but you can get uh, the Boomar Monk. Figure. Oh, so for the uh, those that. That doesn't strike a familiar chord. And, and and for me, it didn't for a long time because I grew up was going, oh, that's the spider droid in Jabba's palace. Yeah. Luke enters, or actually more specifically, 3PO and R2 enter, and that spider droid's in the background. And I'm, I'm seven going, did I imagine that? Yeah. What is that? 
So the whole story, it's weird. Look it up. Sometimes, uh, I, uh, you know, you get lost in that weird uh, rabbit hole. Uh, the Boromar monks, that their temple, Jabba took over their temple. They also had one, the monastery, I should say. They also had one in Teth. They're monks, and it, you reach a certain level of enlightenment. You take out your brain, because you don't want the physical world to get you down, and you go in a little ball of nutrients, and <laughs> they put you on these droids. And the spider droids. And so Jabba yeah. took, take, takes over, moves in, and goes, but yeah, you know what? You guys could stick around. It adds to the creepiness of my palace. <laughs> So this is weird, but so but you get this figure, and you could just it really just highlights. I'm bringing it up now. I'm not a huge fan of spiders, especially in my house. I'm living in now, inundated with spiders. <laughs> um, this is a freaky figure, but it's also it's a part of Star Wars because I grew up at seven, going, "What is that?" It's definitely in that whole list of yeah. like super background, right? Yes, that like you, you, the kind of thing that you maybe maybe another friend hasn't seen, and you could point out, you know, yeah. in, in the days before incredible internet connectivity. Um, and I'm wondering, like, when, when George is, is, sees this in front of him and he proves the design, I, this is totally right up George's like 1950s, you know, space sci-fi. Oh yeah, here. like oh, a spider droid with a brain in it. Put it in, <laughs> and it's never really addressed. And in fact, we don't even really get an answer. Like 2015, yeah. one of Pablo Dago's uh, visual dictionaries and encyclopedias come out, and it's like, oh, here's what the whole story. It, it, you know, I love it. And Teth is in the Clone War movie, of course, but uh, I, I don't know. It's one of those figures. I'd love to have that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the Cantina and Jabba's Palace was just like this rich, like which weirdo in the background can we obsess over and yeah. then want an action figure of? So is, was he like a three pack, a two pack? Yeah, I'm trying to, let me go click back here and see it's, uh, so you got Jabba, you got, um, uh, what is it? Bubo. The, oh, the wart the outside. Wart, uh, wool, cob, cobus shite. Hey, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> that, that's in there as well. And that's all that's listed here right now on this thing. Okay. Um, all the weirdos, man. Yeah, that's so all great. All the people that are hanging out, hanging out in Jabba's Palace. Love it. Love that you can own the weirdos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, my number uh, four, which means up to your number three. My number three is one that I definitely saw on the store shelves and was tempted by back in the day. And the one that I was like, you know what? I got to I got to own this at some point. Uh, it is a twofer. It is that no, they were in, individually carded. So you got to right. get both of them, but then put it together to make the magic happen. You got an Obi-Wan Kenobi and an Alon Sleaze Begano, oh, yeah. both labor labeled Outlander Encounter. <laughs> <laughs> Outlander, of course, the name of the bar that they go into. Uh, so this yeah. is the classic. You don't want to sell me death sticks moment memorialized yeah. in action figure <laughs> format. And I realized when it's just like, it's an Obi-Wan action figure that is designed to be at the bar. Yeah. I need that. In fact, they each come with a bar side. Yeah. They can snap together so you can really interact, uh, recreate this moment. <laughs> really? So this is, so Elon's good. Elon yeah. sleeps by Gano. Uh, obviously one of the most famous in terms of the uh, George Lucas going like, hey, remember when I told you Star Wars is a little bit silly? Yeah. His name's Sleeze Begano. Yeah. Uh, he comes with a blaster. Cool. His life's going places. He's yeah. making some choices. And move. death sticks. You can actually buy death sticks from a toy merchant in That's the form right. of this uh, Elon uh, action figure. Uh, so Elon's great. It's his main action figure. But the Obi-Wan. If, yeah. like me, you're considering making a collection of bizarre Obi-Wans, Obi-Wan has a drink glass that he comes with. That's his accessory. And he is molded, so he has force Jedi mind trick <laughs> fingers. He has force fingers, the two raised up. That's the best. It, I mean, this right? This is the best Obi-Wan figure of all time. Right? It, I mean, it just, it. if you took this action figure out of Star Wars context, you'd be like, because this is in the mullet days where he is oh, looking yeah. the most like, are you the big Lebowski in a different robe? Uh, and then he's got a glass and he looks like he's trying to do some sort of like friendly wave. It's, it is the star Wars version of the buddy Christ figure. <laughs> yes, it is. It's really, cause the buddy Christ figure, he's doing the point and the wink and everything. Yeah, yep. this is, and it doesn't, you it, it looks more like Chris Christopherson than it does <laughs> you and McGregor. <laughs> Oh, wow. This is, yeah, see, and I, I was going down the list and I was like, oh, I should put this on the list. And I was like, oh, no, I hadn't received, <laughs> I hadn't received your list yet. I was like, oh, this will be on Justice. <laughs> yeah, it is high up there. And uh, I, uh, I didn't catch it. You do not have it yet? I do not. 
I well, do not have that or the uh, complimentary uh, uh, Elon's these big guy. That's got to be corrected. Yeah, man. You've that's... just missed. We missed your birthday window. We'll have to look for <laughs> life day. I might buy myself a treat. Oh, that's yeah. the best. That is yeah. great. What a line. Talking about action. Yeah. That's some action. Yeah. You know what? And there, there's something cool about it because it's, uh, we talked a lot the last several episodes about uh, finding from the, the original trilogy, those weird moments that have right. never been created in action figure form. And right away with Attack of the Clones, that's the era that they were in action figures. They're like, well, well, people are going to need this. <laughs> They're going to want the <laughs> death stick scene. And yes, you know what? They were right. Yes. Probably yes. for different reasons. So that's my number three. That's your number three, which means uh, we're up to my number three. And it is uh, talking about characters overdue for having a good figure. You know, Tarkin didn't have that uh, didn't have that first Kenner figure. We needed that. Well, this guy, I think he deserved one, too, because he's the first on screen to say, may the force be with you. And it's General Jan Dodonna. Nice. Love Dodonna. I uh, love him uh, even in Rogue One where Sir Barristan Selmy plays him for a you know, a quick second. And so you told us. But Jan Dodonna, I think it's one of those uh, important characters in the sense of just you need uh, uh, you need this uh, to complete the collection of all the characters. Yeah. Akbar, I get it. Mothma, I get it. Maydeen, I get it. Well, where's Dodonna? He's got some major screen time. Yeah. And, you know, and, and the figure, I'm trying to think what he, um, let, me, let me get this picture up again here. Uh, he is, he's got the robes. He's got the powerful, powerful robes. Oh gosh. Where did I, uh, there's uh, so many trying to remember what he comes with. Yes. What does he come with? Did he's I, I, holding a medal. Is he? Yes. He comes with a medal. Cause I put him on my runner ups and then okay. I took him off when, uh, when I you saw, saw that okay. you, you were respecting the Dodona. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Wow, that's even more important. Cause I mean, but that's key to his, yeah, he does yeah. do that. You forget he's, he's the there. one who hands them to Leia. He's up there. I wonder if they came from his collection. Um, that's there. <laughs> okay, there he is. There he is. There he is. He he is. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's that's a, just. A, I like uh, the action figure because you can imagine that that's the one he meant to give to Chewie, but he held on to it. <laughs> <laughs> like he took it. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. I love this concept of uh, that, that. That. But see, what what I love is they. I guess it would make sense. I'm sorry. I'm going on an emotional journey here. Yeah. That is, a, that is, they're basing it off of the medal ceremony. I, why, why would you not go off uh, he could come battle with a, plans, right. Dodonna? He could come with a big, like, hologram of, like, the the view down the trench, right? Yeah. Like, and, and he's, very classic. Comes with Princess Leah action. <laughs> <laughs> what, with Princess Leah action? Yeah, like, pr- the battle plans provided by Princess Leah. You mean Leia? <laughs> Leah? Okay. Um... Love this, fig- yeah, yeah. I love this figure even more. Yeah, he, you know, it's it's one of those like understand you 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 don't want the old guy who hands Princess Leia. Yeah, the, you don't want thin Santa Claus as an action figure. Kids, <laughs> fine, <laughs> but he's a major character. He yeah. tells us how to destroy the Death Star. Yeah, he's important. Yeah, he's important to leadership. Well, that's why he's important to me. He's on my number three of the best Star Wars saga figures, which means we're up to your number two. All right, my number two is one that I have not purchased. It is one that I have seen at conventions, and I have taken pictures of this character to be amused, entertained, make jokes. I've done it multiple times. I scroll through my photos, go, I remember you already have <laughs> several pictures of that action figure. It is Mace Windu Geonosis Rescue. Now, oh, yeah. here's what's special about it. Um, Mace's face is molded into just a massive scream. Like, yeah. pinched face, mouth wide, <laughs> screaming. The text on the back of the action figure begins, calm and controlled. <laughs> Jedi Master Mace Windu, blah, 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 blah. But it says calm and controlled, and he's he's looking he's like, like you, know, it, you know, back in the day when, when you found out that Samuel L. Jackson, mm-hmm. uh, famous for many things, but Pulp Fiction in particular, was going to be in Phantom Menace, everyone made every iteration of the jokes the about jokes, yeah. the, the, the Jedi who swears, you know, mm. this action figure looks like it. Yes. This action figure looks like, is Yoda a B, you know, yeah. he looks like he's <laughs> screaming that. Then why did you call? Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is the El Royale with lightsaber. Yeah, figure. exactly. Um, I am running through the Geonosis, uh, Petronaki arena battle in my head right now, Joseph. And I don't remember seeing him 
doing this kind of scream. I feel like, uh, you know, I wish I'd written them down. I feel like there's a couple moments in this line because he's early in the line. Yeah. Um, I feel like there are a couple moments where like, oh yeah, something in the movie got changed and it didn't make it to the action figures mm. or that. I wonder if there was a shot that they saw like, wow, you know what? Yeah. We've already put out a couple real good Mace Windu action figures. Yeah. Let's make this one different because he's not like two years later. I believe he yeah. is the initial Mace Windu. Right. Like if you want a representation yeah. of this character, you get screaming, <laughs> mad screaming. Mace Windu. But I don't think we ever actually. Wow. His energy is screaming. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm wondering if like they were like, hey, I right, designed this uh, Mace, you know, the, the quiet, serene guy from Phantom Menace. He's going to have a lightsaber fight. He's going to do some crazy stuff. Yeah. He's going to kill uh, a character. He's going to fight a bunch of battle droids. Oh, I bet that looks like this. Yeah. Or was there a take where he <laughs> screamed as he approached yeah. Jango Fett? <laughs> right. Because even even then, that's a great example. Like, he's just like, mm, not, no. ah! Like okay. his, yeah, like, I think you, Part, you put this a- This party's over. Exactly. That You need that this party's over. Yes. Uh, you flip the switch, I think, to make his lightsaber slash. Yeah. You could flip the switch to just have him turn his head and stare at the person he just killed, the way he looks down at Django's- Headless yeah. body. There's that shot where he's just like, mm, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Love did I shot. just kill you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Your party is over. Your personal party <laughs> is over. Django Fett. Personal party is yeah, over. Yeah. So I just love it because there is, there's a truth to him and he does end up doing yeah. a decent amount of screaming oh, yeah, uh, yeah. in uh, Sith when Sith, he's yeah. uh, dying and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and fighting back the lightning. I just, I mean, it's a, it's an intense action figure. And again, it, it speaks to the era of action figure where specificity mm-hmm. was, was the, the choice of the day. Absolutely. I love that yeah. a lot. Good choice. It's a uh, great number two. My number two is a, uh, it, it might not necessarily be a two pack, but it's a tied spot here on my list. My number two is Lieutenant Danny Fatoni and Ahmed ah. Beck. This is of course, Anthony Daniels and Ahmed Best getting their cameos as real people with no masks and no droid outfits, no Jar Jar uh, uh, motion capture balls on your body. <laughs> this is uh, them in the, uh, in the Outlander nightclub there uh, having a little, uh, having a little uh, moment in the sun. And of course you need these figures. Yeah. And I don't have these figures. And as I try to slow down a little bit while I catch up with my storage space, yeah. I still think if I come across these at any point in time, they're mine. You know, I need them. They were on the rack at Nerd Melt, uh, oh, uh, right by uh, Team Toe, and I really had a hard time passing them up. You made the right choice. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also annoyed they have never been added to the data bank because really, yeah. Since I started Data Bank Brawl, since we jumped into doing it, it's like these are two great characters to highlight with their names that are like the ridiculous Star Warsization what? of their real human names. You know. What? Yeah. That's a that's a miscarriage of justice. I know. I'm offended. Uh, but the action figures are, are it's cool that they exist. Yeah. What do you think of them as actual action figures? I I think they're actually pretty uh, pretty good action figures. To be honest, if you know, it's not uh, it's not a little joke. It's like they're treated as actual functional characters. And you talk about the Obi Wan character with the drink in his hand, the Lieutenant Danny Fatoni one. Uh, he does have a blaster. It's got, nice. um, but he's he's holding. He's leaning and holding. He's got a drink, <laughs> a glorious drink in his hands. And uh, then you could also get the, uh, the Corson Outlander Club uh, collection. Uh, Ahmed um, Bed's holding a blue drink. So uh, uh, Fatoni's holding a, a red one. He's got a blue one here and he's doing the lean as well. All right. And I think as figures go and the, the, the representation, uh, they really captured Ahmed's face and you can just see the character up close. He's got some stuff around his eyes, a lot of detail to it, and then the uh, Danny Fatoni character, the the up close version of <laughs> Anthony Daniels, looks like Danny it's Fatone. ready to tell you a story. <laughs> it looks like Danny Fatoni has a one person show. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. indeed. So <laughs> as figures, as as a uh, little fun kitsch thing, they're great. As figures, I think they're pretty darn great too. Awesome, I love them. Uh, my number two, which means we are almost to the end here, but we have to pause and talk about honorable mentions. And they're yeah. actually in this line had a lot. Uh, what are some of the ones that you really uh, loved and almost uh, put on this list? Yeah, so uh, one that I had back in the day, just because a friend I think was given it as a gift, and it was just like Joseph, you love Star Wars so much, you need to have this. It was a uh, the three PO, the mainline three PO, where he starts naked. 
and you can snap on its coverings. Yeah. Uh, I always kept him in the package. He looks really cool. Uh, you know, I was reading up how when you put on his uh, packaging, he yeah. looks he looks like a kid in Minnesota dress for the winter. He looks a little bulky. He uh, looks a little Ralphie from A Christmas Story there, but uh, but it's such a cool concept. And I yeah. that's what I appreciate about this line, that some of them, for me, are like, yeah, I don't need Anakin's limbs going five different directions, and I'm right. a blaster bolt, like, for myself. But for me, I did appreciate that they're trying to do some different things and make them more make mm-hmm. them more interactive and exciting. So I like the snap on. That's a great three PO. You know, you can finally uh, put on your coverings and all. And yeah, it'd be good. Yeah. Um, another one uh, that I almost picked up uh, at the old Nerd Melt showroom uh, was a uh, Coleman Trabor. <laughs> He's on my runner ups. Yes. Uh, we, I love this character, the one who tries to take out Dooku and end the Clone Wars, and it doesn't go well for him at all. And he's laid out on the packaging mm-hmm. like he's dead. It's like, like dead. Cole, it's the he's packaged like Coleman on the ground after Django <laughs> shoots him to death. It really is. I saw your note and I just started laughing because I've got the figure up here and it totally looks like he just took two two in the chest from Django. <laughs> he really does. He's fallen down. Uh, apparently when you put him out of pull him out of the package and pose him, he looks cool. He looks like good. the the respect he deserves as a Jedi master, but no nope, in the package. That's amazing. Dead. Uh, this is one that I saw at Star Wars Celebration, and I'm fascinated with. Uh, it is an Imperial Dignitary, a lesser-known one, according to this package, named Kren Blista Vinay. Oh, yeah. Which I was very intrigued by, mm-hmm. because Vinay is the name of the uh, dignitary servant in uh, Vader's Castle on Mustafar in Rogue One. Yeah. So that made me curious just to be like, ooh, I want to look up more what the whole history yeah. of that character is, and know how, how and why they chose to reuse that name or if it is indeed the same character or if mm-hmm. Kren Blista Vinay is totally outdated uh, expanded universe stuff uh, so they act, it, it was a great example of an action figure even now inviting me to do more research into the lore and history right. yeah no that's that's the uh, same with the, the Bobar Monk yeah it, this is part of the Death Star possession pack so Janice Grijadis is in that which is the imperial dignitary yeah, figure that we yeah. always make fun of so that's a great choice. Yeah. And then my final one, which is because it's it's crazy specific, crazy trying to make a new character out of a main hero. It is Han Solo Endor Strike, where Han is wearing an entire ATST driver outfit with a communicator molded in his hand. So it is clearly the moment where he I got an idea, where he is yeah. saying that they need reinforcements to the Imperials inside the bunker. But I have always interpreted this is Han Solo put on the helmet, the helmet <laughs> for the hollow cam. Not that Han took off his entire awesome <laughs> Han Solo outfit, the pants with the oh. curling blood stripe, just on the forest ground on Endor, put on the entire ADSD that. driver outfit, then only filmed his face, then put his Han Solo pants back on. Is that what we're being told by this action yeah. figure? I think that's the answer. <laughs> I think that's so awesome. It's a great figure. It's a great figure. It looks awesome. I'm bringing that up now. Yeah, that's a great figure. And it's f- funny now with you see Solo on Mimban, you know, it's like he's probably like, oh, this is familiar to me here. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've I, worn these kind of helmets before. Yeah. Fit yeah. into it nicely. Ah, oh, that's a great choice. It's so weird. So weird. Those are great runner-ups, and my runner-ups include, I have a list here, Dexter Jester. All right, oh, yes, yeah. the Attack of the Clones figure line. Yeah. you got to look at this figure. It is detailed. He's got grease. He's got dirt. He's got a hard day's labor all over his outfit and face. And uh, you know what? Dexter is a malign character and loved all at the same time. Yeah. I love him. You can get WA-7, too. Just have a whole... <sighs> Dexter's Diner uh, reenactment in your living room there. Uh, I also like, uh, you know, I chose Jen Dodano, but a close call was General Carlist Rykan. You can get Rykan. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, I think that's, uh, again, uh, important, especially growing up. Like, why wouldn't you get a, uh, yes, I want a Tarkin. I needed a Dodana. I needed a Rykan. I, yeah. needed, I needed to know who were the leaders of the rebellion. That's were right. Outside I of hate Lake. to lose you. Yaddle's yeah. in there as well for me. Oh, yeah. We talk a lot about Yaddle, and I didn't own it. I don't even remember the figure coming out at the time. Again, I, this is the years I wasn't collecting. Was she much. on a single card, or was she in that? Uh, so the there was the uh, Jedi Council mm-hmm. uh, collection that comes out half in this collection and half in another I collection. I think it is the Jedi Council one. Yeah, because that's where you're going to get some of the, like, can't believe they exist, Opo Rancis, right. uh, all that kind of stuff. You're correct. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yaddle, I mean, we talk yeah. about Come Yaddle on. a lot. 
and the fact that uh, Yaddle exists. Yaddle's real, and here is the character to prove it. That's important to yeah, me. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, and then the a couple more here. Uh, oh, Jar Jar Binks, Gungan Senator. Yeah, enough yeah. said. Yeah. You know, yeah. Pay, pay, pay your respects to the politician Binks there. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, a tie for me, John Dutch Vander, Garvin Dave Drafes. Yeah. Come on, get those guys in there. And General Maydean, they really went back and were like, we're going to redo this figure and also include the pointer. So the, he's got the white he's pointer, got the right? Pointer. Okay, good. And that's, to me, paying respect to what came before. Absolutely. So Maydean's got a point at something. Yeah, that's my list of uh, close calls that almost made Those are great ones. Which means we're up to our number ones, and as always, we like to go with my number one so the guests can close with their number one. I am going with, it's part of a larger set. It is the compactor set. Apparently a Walmart exclusive, but... You can get, yep, Han Solo, Death Star Trash Compactor. Luke Skywalker, Death Star Trash Compactor. You can get Leia, Chewie. You can also get the Dianoga. And when you really click on this figure, you talk about capturing a moment and capturing <laughs> the details of a, of, a, of a creature you never really uh, thought uh, was like this growing up. You just thought it was like a snake with an eyeball. Nope, you see the Dianoga as it is. Tentacles on the bottom, mouth, teeth. That eyeball, it's all there. <laughs> and it ain't pretty, but it's in three and three quarters form. It's to scale, baby. It's wow. good. It's good. Because you had the classic figure. The, there was a little green Dianoga that came out. And like a my friend Mike Beatrice had it. He, he still, he showed it to me with him. And it, it's like, it's almost like a little rubber figure. Yeah, it's not it, a figure. It came with the Death Star. Yes. So it was extremely difficult to come by. Yes. And he had it. But this is like, someone sat around and said, we're going to do the Dianoga. We're going to do it right. Yeah. That came in two parts across the two, I think I was reading, because I, yes. had, I had missed this. I saw your list, and I was like, mm. I got to check this out. So I think like one half of them came with Han and Luke and another with Leia and Chewie, and you snap Connected. them together? Yes. Beca- yeah, yeah, yeah. Because again, you you know, you don't really pay attention. Again, you're growing up, snake with an eyeball. He's got like a tail thing. That's probably what, gra- that's what grabs wow. Luke, but the eyeball is like a separate thing. And then the base is just this really disgusting collection of tentacles and a mouth. And it looks like a weird Stephen King horror creation, like it's in the mist. Nice. So that is why it's my number one. This is why we collect the figures, particularly at this point. We're going to get our main characters. We're going to get Han and all, all his different outfits, Leia, everything, Padme. I want the little weird corners of the galaxy in figure form, and the Diadnoga is definitely part of that. Yeah, to get an action figure of a creature who's uh, you only saw a part of their body. Yes. We're going to give you the whole body. Yeah, unlike, uh, you know, Snaggletooth. We're going to answer it right. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. So that is my number one, which means we're up to your number one. My number one is a weird one that I did own back in the day. Uh, this has been such a great walk down memory lane. I This is back in the day where if you were subscribed to the Star Wars Insider magazine, you were a part of the fan club and you got a crack at these exclusives. So this was the uh, 2003 Fan Club exclusive. It was based on a 1981 Ralph McQuarrie Christmas card. It is Yoda Holiday Edition. It's the best. It's so good, and I still own it, and it made the (laughs) very, very small cut of action figures that I brought with me to Los Angeles. Oh, as it should. So Yoda's going to come out for the holidays. Uh, So I think people can probably conjure this image in their mind of that Ralph McQuarrie. It's it's Yoda dressed up as Santa, and then he's got a sack. He's wearing the Santa coat. Uh, He's got Mm -hmm. a sack of presents over his back. There's like, you know... a uh, ball rolling around and some more <laughs> presents. And this is just an extremely well done action figure yeah. of Yoda as Santa Claus. And it mm-hmm. came in this little sort of um, bubble. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's got a card, but it's a totally different shape from normal action figures. Still fits in visually with this line with the, right. the saga collection 2002 to 2004. But it's got a little bit of Ralph McQuarrie uh, art in the background. And it's just like, you know what? We're not even going to stay in the canon. We're going to yeah. make action figures oh, yeah. of the Christmas cards. That's great. 3PO, R2, Yoda. Uh, and it, there's other Macquarie designs start popping up here in this yeah. line, but this is absolutely the best. And you're right. It, it, it's like, they're the, they're, we're going to have some fun. Yeah. We know you're serious collectors. You want the Diet Noga. You want Obi-Wan drinking. But how about Yoda with a little Santa outfit on? It's just so festive. It's so Yoda. I the love playful it. side of Yoda. I've seen it on display. I don't own it. But yeah, I don't... Um, 
even though we do celebrate Christmas, I don't know. I normally don't decorate. Okay. But now that I got uh, this house this year, uh, I think, I think maybe it's time to track one of these down. Oh yeah. Put, put a Yoda up. Yeah. That's all you need. I do have fill it with holiday spirit somewhere. I got to find it. Oh man. I don't know where it is. Cause I have some, I finally have record players again. I have, I have the three PO and R2 Christmas LP oh. with, you know, bells, bells, bells. And what do you Christmas get? Christmas in the stars. Yeah. yeah. What do you get a Wookiee for Christmas when he already has a comb? Um, <laughs> it'd be a great holiday thing. So that's a great choice for number one and shows, Again, the uh, the line, what this line did, there's some very serious figures, cool for the first time, the little details, and then just the absolute fun, which is part of why we collect figures. Absolutely. So, great list from you, Joseph. I think we might have to continue. And like you said, I got your message too. You're like, I need to do some serious work, but I am uh, allowing myself this distraction, this healthy <laughs> distraction. And yes. yeah, we go to a lot of websites, rebel scum, Jedi business.com is where I'm looking at mostly today. And yeah, you, I, I did, I think you do. I did the same thing. We chose, I chose this list before I sent it off to you. I just continued. I looked at every single line. Yeah. And that's why I think Star Wars Rank will roll on. <laughs> we'll complete our journey through figures. It's a lot of fun. We started this as, let's just do Power of the Force 2. We're keeping uh, keeping on going. And speaking of going, I want to remind you, today's podcast was brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash force center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. We always recommend an audiobook we want you to try out on us. And this week, we've been suggesting Darth Plagueis by James Lucino. Yes, it's a legend's book. We don't recommend them often, but we think you should try this one out on us by going to audibletrial.com slash force center. That's audibletrial.com slash force center. So we're going to keep on collecting figures. We're going to keep on talking about them. Joseph, thank you for coming in. Tell them where they can find all of you, uh, your your adventures, and perhaps pictures of your figures. That is right. You can look at me, post pictures of Screaming Mace Windu and many other things on Twitter and Instagram at Joseph Scrimshaw and anything else, comedy adventures, albums, all that kind of stuff on my website at josephscrimshaw.com. Go to KenNapsack.com for information on all of my doings and comings and transpirings, including some comedy shows with Mark Ellis, both locally here in Los Angeles and uh, some coming out and about Washington, Washington, D.C. in November. Check it out. But for now, we're going to go play with our figures and Star Wars has been ranked. <laughs>